Well, hello everyone, I'm Zhe Chen Bai. Today uh, I'm going to uh, talk about our work enhancing emotional experience by building emotional virtual factors in VR wildbot games. And this is joint work with the uh, Institute of Software, Chinese Academy of Sciences, and uh, Nanyang Technological University. And uh, so, okay, this is the outline of my presentation. It includes introduction, method, evaluation, demo, and the conclusion. Okay, so let's start with introduction. Uh, VR rea virtual reality technology is uh, developing rapidly in recent years, and it is very popular at its provides rich and immersive experience. And it has been widely used in a variety of games. Uh, among these games, VR sports games is attracting the public attention. It has several advantages. On one hand, VR sports games can provide an immersive entertainment experience. On the other hand, VR sports games are capable of performing skill training and enable users to get familiar with the game rules and the strategies. Well, most existing VR sports games usually concentrate on imitating the physical body movements, such as pass, pick up, the more related to the game playing, so that the users may uh, get a realistic sports experience. However, in real world sports games, the participants could experience a variety of emotions, such as joy, pride, or a disappointment. Yeah. But this experience is often overlooked in the existing VR sports games, which means that how to enhance the user's emotional experience in VR sports games is still a challenging problem. So uh, in this work, we take the VR volleyball game as an example scene, and our goal is to enhance the emotional experience of users in the game. And our approach is to build emotional intelligence for virtual characters, which means that we want the virtual characters to imitate the, the real athletes, not only from the, the physical aspects, but also from the emotional aspects. So next, I will show the details of our method. Okay, to model the, the emotion of virtual characters, we postulate that what an emotional virtual character would experience during the, the volleyball game. First, the virtual character will perceiving the game environment and the routing emotion. Second, it expressing the, the emotion by uh, facial expression or some body behavior and so on. So therefore, we propose our solution, which includes two consecutive models. The, uh, emotion cause model for the first stage and uh, expression model for the second stage. Okay, now let's uh, first in, let's look into the first stage, the emotion cause model. Uh, to build the emotion cause model, this task can be uh, formulated as building a computational emotion engine. And there are already some existing works like uh, such as the, the Emma or give me gala and so on. However, these, these were most of the works are based on the handcrafted rules that are based on, uh, or most based on the psychological emotion theories. And uh, for example, if the game state is based on the, some handcrafted rules, for example, if the game state, is, if the game reach uh, a certain state, it will trigger a certain emotional state of the virtual characters. Well, these methods have the following uh, disadvantages. First, the typical emotion theories may not be suitable for the spot scene, especially the volleyball scene. Yeah. And secondly, developers may fall into stereotypes or, or subjective assumption when creating these rules. And third, it is too complex to enumerate all the rules because the, especially in the sports scene, the virtual characters' motion is affected by a lot of factors. So here we think, how about let the model learn the rules from the real world? So here we propose to 
build a data-driven computational emotion engine by using the real-world data and a machine learning model. Well, here comes several problems. What the data should look like, where does the data come from, and what factor may affect the player's emotion. The answer to the first question is hidden in the model itself. We need the game environment information and the corresponding emotion state label so that we can uh, use the data to optimize our emotion cost model. And then, well, for the, the second problem, where the data come from, we have collected a set of real world volleyball game videos. And uh, these videos are split into the rally level clips. Here, a rally means is the, the time between the serve and the end of the play. Then we give an annotation for each rally level clip. And specifically, we uh, annotate a series of game state and the emotion labels. And the third question is an important question. During the annotation, the important question is, uh, an important problem is what factor may affect the player's emotion? And the answer is that there are so many factors, such as uh, the game state, such as scores, activities, and so on. And uh, maybe uh, the communication with teammates, opponents, or even, even with the referees, the coaches, and so on. And also some uh, background information, some background factors may also have uh, influence on the player's emotion. So considering that there are so many factors in this work, we make an assumption that the game state is the main cause of the player's emotion because they are in, that the players are playing in the, are concentrating on the, the game. Yeah, so the game state could be the, the main factor. So finally, we uh, made the annotation in the following format. Specifically, we take the game score, match score, winner team, score reason, and the last ball handler team and last ball handler's activity into the group of game state. And uh, we annotate two possible emotion labels for, for each team and for the last ball handler. Here, I'd like to explain why, should, uh, why we uh, annotated the, specifically annotated the last ball handler, because he or she is the, the player that closes the, to the end of the rally. So he or she, his or hers motion may be uh, specific and deserve our attention. Yeah. So given the annotated the data set, we designed and trained a machine learning model called the emotion cost model. And this model is impl implemented by neural network and it is trained on the annotated data set and optimized by uh, minimizing the binary cross entropy loss. Once being trained, this model is capable of predicting the emotion state based on the the game state input. So more details about the model implementation are stated in our paper, yeah. Now let's uh, look into the stage two, the expression model. This stage is uh, further decomposed into uh, three parts, emotion assignment, expression generation, and the time synchronization. Uh, in the first part, we introduced the concept of personality into the emotion assignment process. This is quite intuitive because given the same emotion state, people with different personalities may express it in a quite different ways. Emotional virtual characters with different personalities can further enhance the fun, diversity, and the emotional experience of the game. So in this work, we use the famous big five personality model to, uh, to model the character's personality. And uh, from our literature review, we find that among the five dimensions of big five model, the extroversion is the key factor that influenced the emotional expression, especially it will influence the intensity of the expression. So in the emotion assignment part, we assign an emotion state 
with its intensity for each virtual character. Next, in the uh, expression generation part, we generate the emotional facial expression by using a set of basic 3D facial blend shapes. Here, the first equation is a weighted combination of the available blend shapes. And the second equation is to multiply the peak expression by the intensity factor. Yeah, this factor is derived from his personality. Then we got the emotional expression here. And next in the time synchronization part, we created the animation based on the, on the peak expression here, because here is a, a still expression. So in this part, we created the, the time synchronized animation. Yeah. And next we show the evaluation of our method. Okay, first the, the objective evaluation. This part is for the, the, the emotion cost model. Yeah. This is the, the table one in our paper. We are evaluating different network structures of the emotion cost model. Then here we report the, the mean average precision for comparison. Uh, through the five experiments, we have explored a simple and effective feature composition and the network structures. Besides, we can also uncover some uh, interesting phenomena from these experiments results. For example, the game scores, the, the game scores and the, also the match score have more effect on the, on the team, on the group's emotion. Well, the, the activities have uh, more influence on the last call handler's emotion state. Okay, for more details of the different network structures, please refer to our paper, yeah, because it is very detailed. Yeah. Next is a, a subjective evaluation. Here, we, we are evaluating the realism of the generated emotional expression. First, on the left, the task one, we let the participant to recognize the emotion type or emotion label of the given animation. The animation is generated by our framework. Yeah, definitely. And this five question achieve a satisfiable average accuracy of about 82%, which means that the generated emotional expression are highly consistent with the human subjective, subjective combination. And these results validate that our model and the characters are capable of precisely expressing specific emotion. Yeah. Well, on the right task two, we let the participant to rank the intensities of the given animation. On average, more than two thirds of the animation can be placed in the in the correct order. Yeah. This promising accuracy shows that the emotional facial expressions generated by our model have intensity variation. And the variation can be uh, perceived by the human users or by the participants, yeah. Next, we conduct a user study to investigate the emotional experience in the VR Volvo game through a questionnaire. Two versions of the VR Volvo game are prepared benchmark was emotional. The benchmark version is a game that only equipped with the basic, with the uh, virtual characters that are uh, with uh, basic body movements related to game playing, but without emotional expression. Well, the emotional version is an, is an updated version that uh, is equipped with the, our proposed emotion experience framework. After playing these two versions, participants were asked to answer the questionnaire and the scores are, are designed as five levels. So here is the, the result of the score. And this user study result shows that first, our proposed framework helps the virtual characters to express appropriate emotions according to the game state. Second, our proposed framework helps users to perceive the emotion variations in the volleyball game as the game progresses. Uh, third, it has 
great potential to increase users' emotional experience as well as engagement of the game. Okay, next I will uh, show a demo video of the emotional virtual characters. And this video consists of two example scenes that are showing two different emotions. And also there will be a, a close-up camera in the lower left corner for easy observation of the facial expressions. And for comparison, we only said, we only said one of the virtual characters as emotional version and others are the basic version. Okay, then it's the second scene is emotion of uh, angry. Yeah, this character is angry and complaining, yeah. Okay, to conclude, in our work, we have uh, the following contributions. First, a data site based on real world wallbox game videos is constructed for modeling emotion in VR wallbox games. And second, a data driven framework is proposed to learn the emotional experience patterns from the real world data. And we believe that this method of this framework, this program can be extended to a variety of sports games, not only limited to volleyball, but maybe also basketball and so on. Yeah. And third, objective and subjective evaluation in VR volleyball game demonstrate that our framework has benefits on increasing users' emotional experience and engagement. Okay, thanks for listening. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm going to start with some <clears throat> um, questions from the floor, and then if we have time, I will um, uh, maybe I, ha I have several questions of my own. So we have um, a question from the floor, which says, I'm wondering how well you think these emotions are conveyed in VR in general animation face faces and facial features are bigger to convey emotions. How do you see this translating to, to VR? And I, you know, the, I think the question is, is about sort of being able to see those emotions, right? Yeah, yeah, this is a good question because, uh, because we are in, the, in an immersive virtual environment, this is different uh, to the, the common video games because in the immersive environment, we can walk close to the the, the, the virtual characters or the virtual character may come close to you so that it is possible to see the, the virtual character's facial expression. And, uh, and I also said it's a good question because the, we also think that the, maybe only the facial expression is uh, not enough. So uh, as, you can, as you see, we, in, in the demo video, we are also, uh, also considering add some uh, body behavior so that the, the, the emotional expression will be uh, more, will be stronger and uh, yeah, it can, it can waste while, it can waste better. Yeah, thank you. And, and, and maybe, I mean, just as a suggestion, maybe you can push that emotion into the action, right? So, you know, people, when they're getting excited, they don't uh, sit there and go ah, in the corner. They come up to you and go, yeah, you know, that type of thing, right? So they actually yeah, yeah. have that animation included into that to get that em emotion in front of your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a, that's a good suggestion, yeah. Um, okay, so the uh, the next question I have from uh, Sang Hee Lee is, um, what would you what would be needed to make your method to be extended to other virtual sports such as baseball? Okay, yeah, 
actually the the main problem need to be solved if you want to extend the method i think is the the data yeah because the 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 model is i think because we have give a example of the model so that the implanting the model is feasible yeah but if you want to ex extend this this method to other other spots maybe you should uh collect a set of data like uh, like what we do yeah i think that this is the maybe the the main problem yeah first you need to collect and second maybe uh, you need to do some uh, annotation yeah and actually our we are what about game we do this is uh actually we build our data set based on some existing data set nah. There are some existing data sites that I have already, already annotated some uh, basic information, basic states such as the scores, activities, and uh, and so on. Yeah, and uh, we construct the data set based on the existing one, so that we only need to annotate the emotion labels and some other game state we want. Yeah. So the answer is, I think the the data may be the the, the important thing. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. Yeah, and 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 uh, I don't have any other questions um, <clears throat> from the floor, but I I had the question. So sometimes players don't like to show their emotion because they're going to be sneaky. Is there a way to suppress that or to take that into account? So, for example, when I'm playing uh, a shot, um, sometimes I'm going to be really sneaky about a shot, and not in volleyball, but in 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 something else, in for tennis, for example. And I, I don't want to show my face because the player will know that um, I'm going to be sneaky. So I give very, you know, flat, you know, poker face. And then I play the shot. And then I'm very sort of, you know, is there a way to sort of ramp that or to deal with that kind of um, emotional suppression more than emotional, um, you know, exp <laughs> expression? Yeah, yeah, I get you. Oh, you mean in the game or, or in the real world of data? In, in the game. So just so that you're not showing, you know, just before you do something sneaky in a game where you think, you know, this, this might give away what I'm going to do if I, if I show them. Um, a, bit of a, a bit of a poker face, as they say. Yeah, actually, uh, acting poker face is more, is more realistic because in the, in the real world game, yeah, in... Also in our annotation, we also found that, it, yeah, there are definitely, uh, actually, yeah, there exists some, some players, they may act a poker face or they are very, very concentrated on the game. So they don't express any emotion during the game playing. But in the, in the game, if we want to uh, give uh, explicit emotion expression or emotion experience, and we want to uh, simulate uh, a emotion response to from the the users. We uh, just said that the the emotional virtual characters to to express the emotion freely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Thank you very much. Okay.